today we get to fabricate the supporting hardware for our schoolie rooftop deck. This is so exciting, but first we have a few tweaks to make on the roof. Well, after a snowstorm and a snow melt, we're back on the roof. <laughs> First piece will probably go like that. Yeah. Why isn't it sticking? I wonder if I should get a, uh, it's not sticking at all. Heat gun? Let me get, yep. Back. Getting a heat gun. So the uh, Eternabond wasn't sticking very well. And we found that the heat gun, pre-warming the surface, allows it to stick a lot better. So we're gonna keep doing that. Oh yeah. There you go. to enjoy the sunset today. This is just the beginning of our wood burning stove creations, I think. Yeah, so uh, last winter, it was really, really stinky with the diesel heater. We totally appreciate having one and uh, enjoyed the warmth. However, we wanted to see if maybe we can use a lot of these drops that we've had that we're not gonna be able to use into and make into anything mm -hmm. and maybe use a wood burning stove. So we bought yeah. this wood burning stove door kit mm -hmm. that came with legs, a uh, flue damper and a door. Yeah. And we're gonna see about making a little wood burning stove. We already have a yeah. chimney pipe up the wall. So yeah. we're gonna hook it up and see. Yeah, it's perfect. I think since um, my dad said that he had dreams of us just like passing out because of the diesel fumes, I've had that like in the back of my head <laughs> since then and I think this is just gonna give everybody peace of mind um, the diesel heater only gets stinky when it gets dirty and I know you're probably thinking well why don't you clean it more often and we're in a very dusty barn so we would have to clean it every single day and it takes yeah. a long time to clean it because you have to take it all apart yeah. it's not like a diesel heater like you would use in your schoolie yeah. it's different than that so all right, we're gonna make a burn barrel today. Yeah. Lisa project. All right, so the first thing, I took the door off. Uh, we'll put the door back on here in a second just so that it makes it easier to move around. But anywho, so there's two holes in this barrel. It's a 55 gallon steel drum and it's been used before and decommissioned. So we took rightful ownership of it. And so put the door right here. And let's go ahead and make sure that we're about the same distance from the side. Let's see, four and a half. And then we have to be able to cut that door flange out there.
Now we can put this guy back on. Oh, look how cute that is. You okay? You're out of focus now. There you go. Damper's ready. We began by making the roof rack hardware by cutting the angle iron into short sections. Marking the holes with a spring-loaded center punch gave us a target for drilling the pilot holes. Now that we've finished building the wood-burning stove, we're just waiting for the chimney pipe to arrive before sparking her up. There it is. How many more of those you need to do? Twenty. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get back to my other job. Bye-bye. <laughs> While Brian continued cutting 20 more pivot pieces for the rooftop rack, I used the drill press to enlarge the initial pilot holes. To some people, it might seem a little ridiculous to clamp your piece of metal for every single hole that you drill. But sometimes this old drill press takes the piece of metal and spins it up in the air, like, and that's not so safe. So play safe, use your tools uh, to your advantage. Little clamps like this, I know it might take a minute to spin this thing, but it's so worth it for your safety. Also, another cool tip, if you can set up a jig anytime to make your life easier, do that. In this case, I just take the piece of steel, push it up against the fence, and I always have the exact distance of where I need to drill. Job. That's way better. Yeah. yeah. Using a flap disc versus a grinding wheel makes deburring fun and easy. Measuring 19 and a half. So because the roof is kind of curved right here, it's only touching at certain times. So if we get the two bolts um, above where the flange is on the inside, but below where the curve starts happening, 
then we should have a nice flush mount. Oh, flush mount. Flush mount. So I just marked where the roof starts curving, where the, the big washer will actually be on the inside, the four inch washer. So we'll, uh, we'll put the bolts up to here, the three eighths inch bolts and see what that looks like and try to get them within that area. Nice. Let's try. Let's do our best. Do our, do we're our darndest. We're nothing, we're gonna do our best. Do huh? our darndest, huh? Yeah. There we go. So now we have our dots center punched on the steel. Now we need to drill some holes, but we need a battery first. <laughs> there we go. See, that one didn't move. Hmm. Drill the hole in the table. So I'll pre drill this one. This one here, I'm just going to use the drill press to punch that one. All right, let's go punch this three eighths inch hole. To show the three eighths inch bolt slides in with like virtually very, maybe a 32nd of an inch in play. No play. Like it's, it's super, super tight tolerances. And that's why I'm not using a washer here because it's, it's kind of redundant to have a washer on something that's like this versus if this hole was too too large and there was a lot of play, like an eighth of an inch or something, you might want a washer to spread it out, but that's not really gonna help in this scenario. <laughs> Got some wood out, out of that one. Showing no love to that table. So, somehow there's wood inside this uh, metal. Not sure what's going on there. <laughs> there you go. Precarious placement. Yeah. So now we'll go to the drill press and drill those also. So now we've got our holes drilled in our in our template pieces. Uh, so this will go on the exterior of the bus. So that'll go in there, that'll go in there. We'll have the holes drilled in the side of the bus through the holes. And then on the inside of the bus, we'll have the part that faces down. You see how that part's bigger? Well, this should fit in that area. And so one of us will be on the inside slide the washer on if it's perfectly and then we've got nylock nuts that are also grade eight whoops that one fell so that'll go there and then that'll go there and then we'll tighten this so that it sandwiches the metal of the roof material and it should work i think that's gonna be great yeah, so we're not using washers on this side either because that's our washer, folks. How cool is that? Yeah. Oh, damn. Lighting. Well, this is... There we go. That's fine. So something that we thought a really long time about was how we're going to make this work. How, how could we do it without drilling through the hat channel? Because a lot of buses that we've seen, people have gone straight through the hat channel and then they put a nut under the rib of the hat channel on the roof or the ceiling inside the bus. But for us, that would mean we lose all this space in our ceiling and Brian's 6'2". So it just doesn't make sense to make our ceiling lower. So to get optimal height out of our ceiling, we needed to figure something out that would fit nice and snug up inside of our ceiling material and go behind insulation, right? Yep, absolutely. And the majority of the weight's gonna be distributed throughout the center of the bus because of the mounts that we're gonna put there along with the outside edges. So 
if people are looking at this and be like, oh, you know, that's not gonna support very well. Well, the, <laughs> the skin of the bus is actually about an eighth of an inch thick. Like it's super freaking thick. Yeah. And so with that, an angle iron and multiple attachment points, like, it's a built up sort of system. Yep. As you build something up, it gets stronger. So that's what we're going for. Yep. Neither of us are engineers. Or and, weigh that much. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not like we're gonna have a party with like 40 people on the deck. Not 40. No. no maybe, maybe 30. 10. 30, all right. I'm joking. <laughs> I bet we could fit at least like 20 with the space that we're creating. But well, we probably won't invite 20 people no. up there at one time ever. <laughs> that seems just unsafe. In the That's bed. irresponsible is what it is. Especially for the ripe age we're living at. Yeah, yeah. so. Life's just a little different yeah. these days. Yeah. Get some grill marks on these babies. Get some proper grill marks. Yep. Slip right in there. Just a little bit of hummus, olives, garlic stuffed olives, chopped with kale, parsley. Uh, from our garden, all from our garden, the kale, parsley, and chives. Um, anything else on there? Ham, sliced smoked ham. Ooh, the hummus, the hummus. Um, we took a bunch of dry chickpeas, threw them in a crock pot overnight with a little bit of chicken broth. Then, uh, yeah, just let those percolate till they're ready. Threw them in a blender. Um, it's got a little bit of hemp oil in there. The olive juice, poured some olive juice in there. Whole lemon, uh, salt and pepper. Anything else? Oh, coconut, coconut milk. milk, some chives. I think that's it. I think that's Homegrown it. Homegrown chives. Homegrown chives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it should be pretty delicious. Mmm, mm, that looks good. Yeah. Yeah. Time for some lunch. Yeah. Looking forward to that. So what else are we packing in this lunch pail? We've got some homemade muffins from my mom. Thanks, mom. Um, they're coconut flour, uh, banana, and chocolate chip. And we also have some local chocolates, dark chocolate. We've got couple old nanners here and we each put um, one scoop of organic peanut butter in this container and then I've got a gluten-free granola and Brian's got some like bare naked maple granola um, so that should be pretty good we won't be eating all this right now but what we find is if we bring lots of snacks, then we have a lot more longevity out here because nothing's worse than trying to work when you're hungry. Someone always gets angry or hurt or <laughs> so something stupid happens. So bring snacks, guys. Lunch is served. Uno, dos. Tres. Bueno. <laughs> bueno es bueno. <laughs> yes! Mm. Okay. Which one do I get? Cheers. Mm. Oh, mukbang time. Ooh. Mm. Wow. Mmm. Oh. And goat cheese. Oh, wow. Mmm. That oh is really god. good. That was hot. Oh my god. Wow. Mmm. Oh, wow. Wow. Mmm. That hummus is so fresh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Look at that. You want a bite? Want a bite? There you go. There you go. All right. We're going to eat now. Bye. Now that we're all fueled up, it's assembly line time. All right. So now that we got our little prototype made, we got to cut some more of these pieces for the verticals. 
and um, and then get on an assembly line and basically drill some more of the washers out also. I'll probably get to starting to drill the washers first because Aaron's going to uh, probably drill the big holes through it with the drill press. Um, and then that way she could start painting those while I cut these bigger pieces. So there we go. Wow. He makes the holes. Yeah. He makes a little hole, I make the big hole. spirits as a degreaser because it dries fast and uh, it does a good job. Since spray paint stinky, I'm gonna pro up. I'd call that the catch of a lifetime. come eventually that we figure this out so it may as well be today because it's nice out so originally we put the plate up on uh, these little flanges that we put together or these little washer deals to connect the unistrut together because this is how it was in the catalog to do it however for the rooftop storage rack or deck, the decking for the storage rack, for it to sit properly, this actually needs to be put on the bottom. So we're gonna put it on the bottom just like uh, Aaron from North Star Journey did. So thanks for the inspiration on this again. You're the man, we should've just done what you did yeah. in the first place. But... So let's, uh, let's see if we can break this uh, red nylock. Oh, you broke it like immediately. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Look at I did it. You did do it. Are we gonna need to respray paint these bastards? No. <laughs> Drop kick. Alright, so now I'm hoping that we have enough room to slide this in oh, and that they that. and that they line up. Can the, okay, so they line up. Little victories. Oh, can the... Oh, that should do it. Maybe then it can be tilted. I won't be able to lift it. That's for sure. So let's put these in first. And let's see if there's... Oh, man. Oh, I don't know if we're going to be able to do this. 
Uh. <laughs> 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 All right, let's get the washers done. That's shit. Lucky. <laughs> so shit lucky. <laughs> the tolerances in here are so tight. Throw me a. Uh, Is that what you wanted? Yeah, just dump, it, dump it all out right here, except for this. We'll do uh, everything except for the. Uh... Oh, you are shit lucky. <laughs> Is there one more? Nice. Okay, so now what we'll do I can is... put the thing on the bottom and you cool. crank it. Yeah, and do it from that side. That was easy. Yeah, so that went really, really well. Now we've got an open space here and we'll be able to use these channel nuts, uh, spring channel nuts to be able to connect our, our decking boards to this. And the whole goal is so that we've got access to the solar panels for cleaning them along with being able to, you know, clean them, do any maintenance that we need to up here, wash the roof, and we just want a safe place to do that. So. Um, I think that this is going well, and we're going to do this to all of the rest of them. There's how many up here total? Four, Six, four, two, four sets, four sets of these brackets. Oh. Brian's gonna cut off a, a little corner. I'm gonna turn this around. On one of these bits, each of the long bits, and I'm gonna use the grinding wheel to swoop them clean nice and rounded so he's going to cut Brown's going to cut this corner off and then I'm going to take the grinding wheel and smooth it and make it soft and we're doing it for fashion for Fa fashion cuts and fashion cuts design cuts yeah Fashion cut. How many more of those do we have to do? Fashion cuts? Yeah. Just a stack. All right. So how many is that? This is how many uh, total. Twenty-one. Twenty-one total. Twenty-one fashion cuts. fashion definitely the point of this is so that there's not a square edge yeah. because this is going to be mounted to the side of the bus mm -hmm. and in this particular case this one will be on the driver's side so this will be facing the front of the bus it'll be bolted into the bus and the edge here we wanted it to kind of be fashionably fashionable sloped down and slightly aerodynamic so that it doesn't have a square edge so that if we're ever getting up there in a lat with a ladder or something there's not a hard edge so it's nice and sloped yeah. for fashion and safety safety and aerodynamics <laughs> bad boys dry, the prime, then we'll paint them flat black. <laughs> Okie dokie, we're ready to start putting the mounts up. Plum Bob set. That's pretty exciting. So first we set Dead Nut up there. It's just the two by four's name <laughs> because it was the perfect size when we uh, went and grabbed it. And uh, now we got the plumb bob set so that we can see where the verticals are going to be approximately. And uh, then we'll grab our verticals and start drilling holes. Oh, yeah. 
things. This is exciting. So with the vertical, we'll go ahead and slap on some butyl tape. We'll throw the bolt bolts through and then also have a little bit of paint that will uh, paint the bare edge. All of that going in at the same time, essentially. So should be interesting. Yeah, we're going to be in and out of the bus constantly. We've got our mega washers on the inside, the lock nuts on the inside, a crescent wrench with a box end on the inside. Oh, and we did clean up the roof and people were asking for an update on what we thought of the paint once we cleaned it. It still sucks. Still pretty dirty. <laughs> I mean, it looks better, but I don't know. I have high paint standards. What can I say? Paint stop. Okay, so right now we're essentially setting up a giant jig so that all of our pieces line up when we mount them to the bus. So Brian's up here on the roof. What we'll do is we'll have uh, two pieces that are clamped in place with a piece of angle iron across it. And then we'll have a floater piece right here with the plumb bob on it so that um, we can put the piece plumb with the plywood or the two by four. Okay, so we've got a piece of angle iron strung between two two by fours. And the reason for that is when we put the verticals up, because we don't have our deck boards yet, we need to have a solid line between all of the pieces that are gonna be up there. And so the angle iron is actually gonna end up being a cap on all of our deck boards that are gonna be up there. It's also going to represent a part of the solar panel on this uh, backside. It's gonna be part of the solar panel mounting platform. And so by us setting the two by four on top of the Unistrut where it's gonna be, it's gonna uh, show us exactly where level is off of the top two rails. So now, now we've got something to guide us as we're placing our vertical supports that are gonna go on the side of the bus. Woohoo! Hey, did anyone mention how nice it is today? It's beautiful. It's like, <sighs> We're like in the middle of November almost. In Ontario. In Ontario, Canada. And it's already, it's still, wow. And we're back to like 20 something degrees. Yeah. This is crazy. We should have shorts on today. I had shorts on earlier today. Wow. I did. All right, so we feel like we're pretty level here. The thing about it is we're not on completely level ground, so using a bubble level is kind of counterintuitive, but we got some vertical levels off of the uh, skin of the bus that was from the manufacturer, and we just took an average on that, and we determined that if we're off by just, if the bubble's just touching the line on the left side, then all of that was consistent. And visually holding it up here, it looked like that was the case. And so, um, I think that it's gonna work pretty good. So now that we've got our center punches hit, we'll drill the holes, spray paint the holes, and then start doing butyl tape and stuff like that. <laughs> Now it's time for a little spray paint, babe. Yeah, can I do that? Yeah, if you want. I'll go inside and hold the cardboard. So the one that we are about to drill right now likely has a bunch of wires behind it. Ooh, stuck in here. It likely has a bunch of wires behind it. So let's take a peek here. Yeah. Okay, so it's, yeah, it's this rib. Uh, which side of that rib are we on? Uh, the left side and you're facing it. 
left side. Okay. Yeah. So we've got all these guys behind it. If I pull them out, you should be good to go. Okay. You stay in there and film as I'm drilling. Okay. Let me know when. All right. Give her. All right. I'm doing the bottom of the tube. You're only a couple inches away from the rib, right? Yeah, I'm in the appropriate spot. Perfect. The left of the rib by about three inches. Perfect. Yeah, go for it. I see you. How am I in per clearance? Perfect. Okay. All right, I'm drilling above that now. Go for it. <laughs> So bad. Nice. All right, I'll stay in here and I'll cover up the holes. All right. Just make sure you take the blotting cloth up with you. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. ready? Yep. So what we're doing here is just throwing a little piece of um, paper bag behind the hole so it doesn't blast paint through the hole. You done? Hold on. Okay. Alright, I'm good. Thank you. Perfect. Cut some spray paint. That's what we wanted. Alright, so the first thing I'm doing is just setting uh, the grade 8 bolts. These are 1 inch long. They're uh, 3 8 inch diameter. And their hex head. Okay, so I got caulking around the whole thing. This is my small side. I'm gonna flip her around, put it up to the hole. Woo! All okay. right, so let me pass this through first what? and then put the mega washer over the, the deals. Mega washer's on. This is really hard to show you guys. There it is. All right. All right, that's finger tight. Finger tight. All right, let's start with the top one. You have both of them finger tight? Yep. Perfect. Let's do... What? Top one, you said? Yeah, top one. So you just hold it still and let me know when you're ready. There you go. My friggin' wrench is stuck in the ceiling. Sorry, I gotta turn back a little bit to get my wrench off. Okay, go. You don't wanna get in a situation like I did last time where my wrench got stuck in the ceiling, so I couldn't get it out. There we go. Stop. Stop. Okay, go. great squeeze out on that uh, on that butyl tape, which is awesome. Um, we'll get that trimmed up. <laughs> Look at that. So the butyl tape squeezed out a whole bunch, which is fine. That was expected that it was gonna do that. So it's got a really tight seal in there is what's going on. And this is solid. So there's gonna be downward force facing on that from the solar panel. This is the solar panel section right up here, going straight down on that. Uh, that one wasn't the most straight up and down vertical. Hopefully we can do better on the next one. <laughs> That'll work, that one. I think it's gonna work great. It's pretty freaking solid. 
And right here is the, all the way across the top of the bus right here is a solid beam. So this is positioned right on top of it. So the downward pressure from any weight on top of that will be resting directly on top of that, uh, that beam there. Uh, so it's pretty solid, pretty solid design, I think. Brian and I are just kind of laughing about how easy this seems to be coming together. And I think the answer is planning. The more you plan, the better and easier things come together in the end. Um, and that's been something that we've learned along the way. But now we're over a year in and we finally figured it out. Cool, huh? Now that this one is on, we're going to go and attach the next one over here. Uh, the paint should be dry enough uh, by now. So there's the beautiful figure eight design that Aaron did on this one. Looks amazing. That's going to seal out the water, any moisture. Butyl tape's pretty cool. You could form it, form it up. Do not chintz on caulking, ever. Nobody ever said, what well, should I use less caulking, all right? Load it up. How'd the inside go? Really good. Yeah? Yeah, it looks great. Nice squeeze out, super super tight and firm uh, some of the mega washers kind of went on a tilt which was fine totally fine it doesn't matter we just need them for strength yes so yeah it looks good out here cool <laughs> maybe we'll just like pull this off the extra and oh if you need to climb up here with me you can no um, i like doing this this is fun and pull this extra off. And then just dress the edge. And then squish the edge in nicely with my fingernail. Fingernail. So it's all kind of gooped up to the edge. Look at that. Look at it. But I used to be obsessed with stick tack when I was a kid, so <laughs> this really makes sense that I love this. That's a good factoid there. Factoid. If we ever get like in a trivia game where it's like my life, yeah. Or death, or stick. your life or death, and we need to do trivia on each other. Stick tack is a good answer. She loves stick tack. All right, so we are quickly losing light. It's starting to get super moody out here. Uh, so we're going to keep on working, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. We're going to try to finish this. It's uh, almost becoming no focus 30. Right. <laughs> it's us versus the light. Yes. But it's we want only like 5:30. Yeah, it's only it's pretty early We're still. Five. Yeah. So all of this uh passenger side went really really well. We're going to do the exact same on the driver side. Um so yeah, it's going to look the same as the rest of them, really. That's all that we're doing here today. We'll probably show you what it turned out like in the next video. But for tonight, that's it. Let's go. Yeah.